The ASUS PhonePad is a tablet with phone functionality, meaning you can put it up to your ear and talk, as strange as it may sound. Will it be enough for you to buy it? Well, let's answer that question. I'm Anton D. Nod, this is Pocket Now, and you're watching the ASUS PhonePad review. Let's go check it out. The ASUS PhonePad is one of the first tablet smartphone crossovers. Thanks to Samsung, we are by now familiar with the phablet concept of a smartphone tablet hybrid, but the phone pad is a tablet with phone capabilities. One of its main selling points is the earpiece at the top, a bold addition to a 7-inch form factor. Will it make you leave your phone at home? And more importantly, could this be your one and only daily driver? For the full text of the ASUS phone pad review, including benchmarks and more, make sure to check out pocketnow.com and follow us in the links in the description. On the outside, the phone pad shockingly resembles the Nexus 7. That's because ASUS is the company behind both of them. However, they replaced the plastic back on the Google tablet with the aluminum cover which is both good and bad, depending on which side you are on – looks or durability. Behind the aluminum and front glass, there's an Intel Atom Z2420 processor clocked at 1.2GHz with a single core. One gig of RAM tries to help it, in addition to the PowerVR SGX540 GPU. You can choose between 8 and 16 gigabytes of storage options, and of course, whatever you choose, you can expand it via microSD card slot, and if you are lucky to live in a region where the phone pad has a back camera, you'll find good use of the 3.1 megapixel shooter on the back. Else, you're stuck with the 1.2 megapixel webcam. Our review unit has compatible radios for GSM and HSDPA operation, in addition to the usual Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth radios. No, there's no NFC on the phone pad. Powering everything is Android 4.1.2 out of the box and a 4,270 mAh battery. There are two things setting the phone pad apart from the Nexus 7, the earpiece and the processor. After using the phone pad exclusively for a week, believe me when I'll tell you this, people will give you the looks, wherever you are, once you take a call on your tablet. If you're like me and you don't really care, you'll finally be able to leave your phone at home while you're out. I know I'm one device lighter when I'm on the go. The Intel Atom Z2420 processor, also known as the Lexington platform, is intended for emerging markets, a processor on the cheap, not compromising too much on the performance end though. Even though it's a single core in today's sea of dual, quad and even octa-core devices, Intel heavily calls out the Android optimization on the CPU. On the software side, you're greeted with Android 4.1.2 out of the box, with a light ASUS skin on top of it which tries to keep things as close to stock as possible. The custom notification shade on the ASUS keyboard can be easily disabled by flipping a switch to revert everything to the way Google intended Android to be. Sure, you left with other ASUS-specific features, but they're not that much in your face, like custom widgets or some menu options. Overall, the tablet did a pretty good job at handling our regular day-to-day -day applications like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Foursquare, Email, Calendar, Spotify, YouTube, Maps, Browsing, and so on. It is an instant, but it isn't frustrating either. It does a decent job until you throw a high-end game at it, where it occasionally stutters. It is a single-core CPU, after all. Some other ASUS-specific applications include ASUS Splendid, for tweaking your display to your liking, ASUS Story, for a quick and easy way of creating photo stories, ASUS Studio, a gallery and photo editing application, the Audio Wizard, for tweaking the sound output by applying certain equalizer settings, and BuddyBuzz, that gathers all your social content under a single application. There's also a dictionary, file manager, movie studio, paint application, note-taking solution, Amazon Kindle, and Zinio. You can uninstall a couple, but you'll have to disable most of those you don't use, so that they don't get future updates on top of the baked-in ones. There are also some ASUS-specific widgets, some interesting, like the battery widget, task manager, and buddy buzz, and some you'll probably never use, like several clocks, emails, counters, press readers, and so on. We've used the phone pad exclusively over the course of six days in the city of Oradea, Romania, under the stable HSDPA umbrella. Call quality was decent on both ends and speakerphone performance was solid. The phone pad seems to not only pick up the slightest signal, but it also managed to give us an additional bar level over phones in the same spot. Sadly, our review unit only had a front-facing camera, and as far as webcams are concerned, it delivered medium performance. It won't wow you, but it will come in handy for your Skype calls. Battery, on the other hand, will deliver a solid performance. Under light to moderate use, 
you will get as much as three days of usage and under heavy usage it will surely last throughout the entire day at least. Our typical daily review usage implies 10 or so emails sent and received, 3 to 5 calls, just as many text messages, social media activity on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Foursquare, listening to music through Spotify, watching Pocket Now's YouTube videos, light mapping and navigation with a fair amount of internet browsing. Your mileage may vary depending on your usage and whether you use one of the three modes of smart power saving on the tablet, ultra saving, optimized and custom. We have had it disabled all the time and still got decent battery life. The foam pad is most of the times frowned upon, however that only happens when you put it to your ear. It answers a question of a very specific market, those who always carry a phone for calls and a tablet for on-the-go work. Even if you're not part of the target audience, having an earpiece up top and never using it, it is always better than not having a certain functionality at all. Our review unit set us back $333 here in Romania, but depending on your region, you might be able to grab it cheaper. If you're lucky, you might also be able to get the camera-enabled version too. We'll rate the ASUS PhonePad an 8 out of 10, because even though it has an earpiece and the Intel processor is doing an excellent job at light to moderate load, it often has trouble keeping up under heavy load. That, plus the screen, is moderate. That's gonna do it for our ASUS PhonePad full review. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to follow and subscribe to PocketNow on all the usual social media channels, links in the description below, and you can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. I've been Anton Dinaj. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time.